I'm going to start on time, which I hardly ever do, just because we're about full here. Anyway, people can wander in if they want. So I'm going to dive right into it. Oh, what I usually do these days is a uh, fairly short monologue to start with, and then I like to get into back and forth. Um, because if I was just going to preach at you, you could just watch a YouTube video. Uh, the more interesting, useful thing is just when we can have back and forth and people can ask stuff and, and throw the discussion in whatever direction they want. Um, but I usually start with a fairly short monologue so people get the general gist of what I'm saying and so we don't have to discuss and debate the terminology of what we're even talking about. So I'm just going to dive in. A guy shows up at your front door and he says, hey, I'm new in town and can I have a few minutes here of your day so I can tell you about some services I provide. And you say, uh, I'm kind of busy. And he says, it'll only take a few minutes and I promise you that when I'm done, you will be sure that you simply cannot live without the services I provide. And we say, all right, this is going to be a waste of time, but what services do you provide? And he says, well, we decide on a case-by-case -case basis what services we think you need. Now, maybe it's we give you food, maybe it's we help you with housing, maybe it's we help your neighbor, maybe it's we help protect you, but we decide what services you need. And you're already kind of suspicious, like, why would I, why would I let you decide which, what services I need? And you say, well, this sounds kind of fishy, well, how much does this cost? And he says, well, we decide as we go along on a regular basis how much we're going to charge you for it. And the, 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 the price may fluctuate here and there. And you say, okay, I, I don't think I'm interested. Uh, it sounds too big. I can't even tell what you're going to do for me or what it's going to cost me, so no thanks. He says, okay, maybe I wasn't clear. You don't, we don't ask your permission exactly. You have to pay us the price that we say it's going to cost you for the services that we're going to decide to provide you. And you say, what do you mean I have to? You just, I don't, I don't have to pay your services. Well, th there will be adverse consequences if you don't. Would you just mean my life won't be as good if I don't hire you? Or, or, or are you threatening me? Well, I don't, don't call it a threat. <laughs> See, if we don't all work together for the common good, you know, things don't work as well. So we can't let people not pull their weight and not do their fair share of making this system work together. He said, wait, you're talking all this vague garbage. What are you going to do to me if I don't pay for your services? Well, let's not get into that. You just, if you pay, everything will be perfectly fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying things would be okay if you don't pay, but just, just pay and go along and everything will be just fine. And you say, all right, kind of sounds like you're threatening me and it's time for you to leave. So you slam the door in his face. He comes back the next day and he says, I, I think you were right. It was, it was rude of me to just say you have to pay for my services. And, but now you're really in charge. Now we will serve you. And you say, okay, good. So now I get to decide what services you provide? Well, no. We will still decide what services we provide. Well, I decide the price I'm going to pay? No, we decide the price and you still have to pay well, that's the same as before. In what way am I in charge? Well, you see, each month, I and my cousin Bubba will show up here at your front door, and you can choose which one of us is going to decide what services you need and how much it will cost for that month. Now, if you don't like the way it goes that month, next month we will come back, and you can choose the other one who will decide what services we provide and how much it will cost you. So that really means that you're in charge. You're our boss because you get to choose between the two. Well, what if I choose neither? What if I don't like either of your services? You're not even telling me what the services are. You say what it might be. Like, do you guarantee that you're going to feed me? Well, no, we don't guarantee that. Do you guarantee that you're going to protect me from, from other people? No, we don't guarantee that. Do you guarantee that you're not going to do things I don't even like? You know, never mind not doing what I want. Might you do things I, I'm morally opposed to? Well, yeah, we might. 
but you don't really have a choice. Again, everyone has to work together for the common good for this to work. And you think, I'm still not in charge. Give me a choice between two people robbing me. Oh, come on, don't call it robbing you. We're serving you. We're representing you. In fact, we are you because we're all in this together and we're all going to be one big happy family and if you just go along and, and pay what we say and we perform the services and, and you say, no, you're still threatening me, claim the organization. And he comes back the next day and says, I don't think you all the way understood the situation. Maybe, maybe you're not clear on how this works. We're serving you. We're representing you. You are the customers. And you're the boss, and we do what you want. And if you don't go along with this, you're the bad guy for messing up the situation. We were all set to uphold our end of the bargain. And by living in this neighborhood, you agreed to go along with because the other people go along with it, because if they don't, there are adverse consequences to them. So you're the one causing trouble. I mean, we've been to all your neighbors' houses and told them, here's the way it is, and most of them have decided when they heard what the consequences were, that they're going along with it. So when you don't go along with it, you're the problem here. You're the one not pulling your weight. You're the one messing up our society by objecting to this and trying to get out of your responsibility to participate in this great system. And you say, you're saying, please leave, and you slam the door in his face. Here's the point. If that happened, if that guy showed up at anybody's door, just about everybody in the country would not only recognize that what he was saying was criminal, but downright insane. For someone to tell you, I'm going to decide what services you need, I'm going to decide the price, and you don't have a choice whether to support it, whether to pay for it, whether to go along with it. Now, guy comes back next week and says, Okay, I understand that you don't really want to be coerced into this. You don't want to be forced to pay for it when you don't even know what the services are. But let me put it this way. Aren't there some of your neighbors that you may not like their habits, you may not like what they support, you may not like their attitude, you may not like what car they drive, uh, whatever. You can suggest to us things about your neighbor that you wish were different and we'll see what we can do to change that. And if you're a decent human being, you say, I don't want you terrorizing. You sound like the mafia. I don't want you terrorizing my neighbors. Leave my neighbors alone. Even the ones I don't particularly like. Leave them alone, too. He says, are you sure? I mean, we don't like to do it too directly, but we could kind of take some of their money and get you something nice. Wouldn't you like that? But no, you're just being in the mafia. Leave them alone. Don't rob my neighbors. Even the ones that I don't particularly get along with, don't rob them either. He says, well, okay, but i got to tell you, not all your neighbors said that, and so you're going to have to pay for some of the things that they want that you might not want, you might be morally opposed to, but you don't really have a choice because they went along with it. They asked us. We're representing them because they actually asked us to take your money to pay for things they want. So pay up. And again, you find the door in the face. Again, the point is that in that context, everybody recognize, recognizes that the guy who shows up at your door and says that is the bad guy. He is acting uncivilized. He is not playing the way decent moral human beings play. It's a threat. It's extortion. It's the mafia. Now, if everybody recognizes that in that setting, you know, the admittedly silly hypothetical example I just gave, that people chuckle at you're so stupid, nobody's going to do that. No private person is going to come and say, I will decide what services to give you and I will decide the price and I'll hurt you if you don't pay. Why is it that just about 100% of people think that's ridiculous and would say, no, that wouldn't be okay? And almost 100% of people believe the exact, exact same lie as long as they are taught from when they're really young that this group is allowed to because they're called the United States Congress. And when they say, we decide how much you're going to pay and we decide what services to provide you, and we don't guarantee you anything. We don't guarantee you food. We don't guarantee you protection. 
and we can change the price whenever we want. We call it tax rates. 